uh, let me uh, let me know if you guys can hear me and if I've got my desktop shared there so you can see our my Leo online class page there. So. No, nobody can see it or hear me. Okay, I'll, I'll take that as, as somebody can hear me. I haven't, I haven't used a lot of the features for uh, for uh, um, Zoom here. That's, that's nice. Maybe I'll ask people to use that. Uh, raise your hand. <laughs> so yeah, raise your hand if you can hear me and if you can see the internet operating systems again. <laughs> okay, there's a way to do it in Zoom. So, uh, uh, Mr. Yadav, and excuse me if I mispronounced that, uh, did it. How do you do that? More. Well, anyway, well, I'll have to figure that out. Although whoever did that, if you want to kind of just shout out how you raise your hand in Zoom, I'd be interested to know. Probably over here somewhere, I'll bet. <laughs> okay, um, well, I mean, this is a big class, but we've only got four people here so, so far. Uh, so, I mean, you know, as a warning, I, I talked a lot last time, but, you know, I'm not going to be doing that a lot on these sessions. So these really are meant for you guys to bring questions and stuff. Um, I'll give a few reminders here that I might bring up my environment. Um, so if you're not reading regularly the announcements and getting onto the class, make certain you're doing that. I, I, I can tell a lot of people aren't watching the videos that are up there aren't reading the getting started instructions and, and aren't reading the announcements, okay? So there is a, a problem set due. We still have a week for that, a week from today. The first program assignment is due uh, two weeks from today, but don't underestimate the time it's gonna take you to do this, do these, is right? If you don't have your dev box up, uh, you're behind. So although um, over half people have gotten it up, uh, but, but yeah, I still have, around half, a little less than half, haven't uh, submitted that first uh, assignment zero. Um, so you do need to keep working on that. Um, I can try and answer general questions on that. At some point, I might try to start setting up um, individual one-on-one -on -one Zoom meetings uh, because I can get in and control your uh, computer over a Zoom meeting and uh, we can uh, investigate uh, in person, install issues or whatever. So, but as a general thing, you know, if you don't have that up yet, keep working on it. Um, what you should probably most likely do still still use email. Um, my my general advice is that uh, what what I normally want people to do <coughs> is start from a clean install. So you should go to your repository directory, wherever you are normally trying to start up. You know, install your um, dev box from and do a vagrant destroy. So um, this is actually my terminal from my host machine. So I'm not going to actually run this because I don't want to destroy my machine, but um, but you can always, you know, if you've got an install that's not quite working or something, you can always go to your repository, do a vagrant destroy. Um, and that will actually delete it so they can do a fresh install. When you hit return, it'll ask, are you sure? But yeah, just say yes to that. And then just do a vagrant up again, right? Um, and that'll try and install again from a fresh installation, right? But the thing I need people that are still having problems to do is you need to learn how to copy and paste text from your terminal. So screenshots aren't 
that useful. So, so whatever output comes from, from doing your Vagrant Up when it's trying to install stuff, you should copy that and paste it into an email message and send that to me. And I, I can tell from I that, tell from that what, what stuff is, what stuff is, is being, um, is being installed correctly and what stuff um, is having problems under installation. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Hi, uh, yeah. Uh, when I went to programs and features, I couldn't find that Hyper-V in my programs and features. Yeah, so uh, I had an announcement about that. Everybody's reading the announcements, right? So, um, what I think happens on that is uh so maybe do you have like a version of uh like windows 10 home maybe or something like that do you know yes yes yeah so i mean some versions of windows 2 they don't have that hyper v okay that's fine uh but but i think people a lot of people that where you can't un you know disable that hyper v you need to still have the the virtualization enabled but when you try and do an install and you should go ahead and try and do an install but you might what i mostly see people happen is is uh they have these hash sum mismatches um and it seems to be something deep down into the virtualization so i mean it's something similar that we need to turn off but i can't i can't seem to find it but there does seem to be a workaround that has worked for at least two or three people so if you do if you don't have the hyper v that to turn off and you do try to install and you see these hash sum mismatches what you should do is download this bootstrap.sh um, okay. and then replace, um, and then go to your repository on your host machine, um, which will be called something like CSCI 430 OS Sims. Inside of there, there's a directory called scripts and you want to replace the bootstrap.shell that you have in your repository with the one you download. And then try to do the vagrant destroy and the vagrant up again and see that that seems to work around. So basically what we've done is put something in there that doesn't, that says, okay, you don't really have to do these, uh, these SHA checks for all the downloads for installing stuff. And so it kind of works around the issue. Give that a try. See if that helps out. And everybody do read your announcements and check every day the stuff I'm posting. Um, um, so yeah, I mean, these are going to be helps, you know, question and answer kinds of sessions. So, you know, I'm, I'm not going to be like, like I did on Monday, um, uh, kind of just talking. So, you know, feel free anytime to, to ask a question. If you're shy or, or, you know, you can always send it to me privately uh, in the, the Zoom group chat. You can specify to a particular person to send it to, me or somebody else, if you kind of want to talk behind my back in class. So, um, I was kind of maybe just talk about stuff at random unless I get questions. So, I mean, I know people are still working on the dev box. Um, and I can try and answer general questions, although, uh, but, but yeah, go ahead and try if, if you want to. Um, although, you know, my answer might be, let's take it offline, send me an email of the results of your Vagrant up after you do the Vagrant destroy, um, and or at some point I'll probably try and start setting up individual sessions if people continue having issues. And I can, I can use Zoom to control your computer and install the stuff by hand and see exactly what the issue is that you might be having and probably we can get past it, so. All right, I have got quite a few people now, so not bad. Um, I mean, I'm mostly, well, um, I'm, let me go back to that just real quickly, so. A lot of people join, I think, after I mentioned these. So, so do remember about our assignment. We got a, a problem set in a week and, and the first program assignment, but don't estimate the time you'll need for the program assignment. So um, I might talk a little bit more about the example assignment uh, and the programming assignment here. So. Yeah, and another thing, I mean, you know, if, if you had a slightly bad and, uh, you know, if your install isn't quite working correctly, uh, you, so, so a, a couple of people are definitely getting 
uh, stuff installed, but they don't get the desktop, right? So if the window that gets popped up by VirtualBox and Vagrant doesn't have a full desktop, it just has like a login prompt, um, you're, you're making some progress, but, but you didn't get the desktop installed and probably didn't get some other stuff installed as well. So, so we, we, there's still issues to figure out um, if, if you're at that point. You, you need to have this full desktop, uh, you know, where you'll have your, your bar over there and where you can run terminals, but where you can also run GUI applications like Visual Studio Code and some other stuff. All right, questions? I might just kind of randomly start. You know, the, there's a whole video on an example assignment, probably not today, but maybe next week, I might kind of give people some hints on the first actual assignment you're, that you're supposed to do, like Monday or something. I don't think I'm quite ready, people are quite ready to uh, um, do that yet. But, but again, you know, you really should get your dev box development environment set up and get working on the assignments as soon as you can. So um, let me close that off. Uh, one thing that I had mentioned in the, 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 the number four video for the, the zero zero, you know, the kind of getting started videos. Um, when you are using Visual Studio, you don't necessarily have to use Visual Studio, but I recommend it. I've got all the hooks set up. Um, so that you can do the, the clean and the build and the test from inside of Visual Studio. But uh, make certain that when you use Visual Studio, when you open your folder, that you open the top level. So it won't work correctly if like you go down here and like open the assignment one folder. So if you do that and try and do a build, for example, um, actually I'm gonna close that, open the example one folder. But if you go in and open folder, but if you're not opening the top level, but like opening example one or assignment one or something. And, and then if you try to use the test, the, the hooks that I have, like uh, control shift uh, C to clean it, uh, you'll see it doesn't seem to work uh, because yeah, the, the things aren't going to be set up correctly if, if you haven't opened the folder at the top level. Uh, control shift B. Um, so, um, and if you try and find the tasks by hand by, you know, like run, um, what is it? Uh, uh, configure tab, run task, control shift, uh, C and run tasks, you won't see the task to build and test and stuff. So, uh, but yeah. Uh, yeah, I'll make the video available. Um, it is being recorded. Um, I saw that. So, yeah. So, yeah, again, it should, should be up there barring technical problems. We'll get the video up. Um, but yeah. So let me close this off and open this correctly. So I always start by opening the folder, but open the top level basically. So for us, it's the CSCI 430. So. So yeah, some people, um, um, so I had a question about, um, um, there was some missing stuff um, when people did their make submit. Let me run that from a terminal. I think it'll be easier to see, right? So in general, you know, once you get your dev box up, you need to learn how to use the build system to, to, to build your code and test it, and also to make the submission files to submit, right? Um, So uh, you have to be in the right directory to do that kind of stuff. So, you know, you have to be in the, uh, uh, on your dev box, it's gonna be in repos, CSA 430, kind of the same name as, as on your host system. Um, assignments, then I'll go to example one. So if you're doing a make submit, and it's easy to miss, but uh, some people had an error when it tried to run the system info 
and again, I might have mentioned this uh, last week. I mean, you can run these commands by hand. So I, I could run system info from the command line. It just kind of gathers a bunch of information on your on your virtual box system um, and saves it to a file. So, so this redirects the output into a file. But if you ran that uh, and you instead got an error message, um, something like it can't find uh, BASH, especially like the backslash R, that means most likely you didn't follow the instructions when you were installing Git um, to get things set up. So there's a there's a, a setting on Git uh, that says uh, how to treat new lines and uh, on files that you check out from the Git repository. And if you don't select the right one, which was the third option to um, to not convert new lines, basically what happens is when you did the clone, it checked out all the files and all the files that were like plain text files, like scripts, like the system info. It changed all the new lines. Uh, and this probably only happens if you're on a Windows system. So it, it changed all the new lines from Unix, what Unix expects, to using carriage returns, which is what Windows uses, right? But then when you get into your dev box um, and try and run system info, there's these carriage returns in your scripts um, and they won't work anymore, right? So um, if, if you see that, you can just convert them back by hand. So I could do like a DOS to, um, not to DOS to box, DOS to uh, Unix. So that's just a little script that converts from uh, Windows carriage return line feed standard uh, to Unix, right? So that would probably fix it. So, so um, if, if you convert it to Unix format, I think there's a Unix to DOS as well. So if you need to go the other way, but you shouldn't have to do that inside your um, dev box here. So if you do that and try like running system info by hand, it should run. And then if you do your make submit. So what was happening since, since that didn't run, it didn't create the system info .txt file. And then when it tarred all these up, that was missing. So that, that file was missing from your submission. Right? So for this class, um, that's probably going to cause a problem because there's a, uh, there's a, a script that's run whenever you need to submit your assignments for this class. There's a script that's run to do the system tests. So like, um, if I go to assignment one and I do a make submit, um, um, no, I'm wrong. Um, it only does the source file, so um, it may. Oh, it it it, it won't. It, it may not cause you a problem on the submit. That's fine. But when you try and run the tests, so if you try and do a make uh, um, system tests, so so this this runs a little script to do the system tests when you get to the point where you're trying to work on assignment one. So yeah, again, if your carriage return line feeds are incorrect, um, so here it's actually running, although it's failing all the system tests because you have to write the code to get the system test to pass. But um, but yeah, if you have that carriage return line feed issue, instead it won't run. It'll give you a similar message that uh, you know I can't find bash backslash r. Right. So so again, you could probably fix that by hand by fixing those. Um, there is a better, um, so if you know Git, um, and maybe I should post this as a general announcement, because I don't think too many people did this, but um, so uh, if you look for, you know, the settings, yeah, configuring Git to handle line endings, um, from your host machine, you'd have to do kind of what it says in here. Um, so, but you'd have to specify the, the correct one here. Um, so 
So, so I think the correct setting is, yeah, is input like it says here, All right? So if you, if you went to your repository again on your host machine, uh, again, this, this terminal is on my host machine and, and I'm in my, my repository. Uh, actually, I'll change into that repository again. And, and if you did that setting here, like it says, um, um, that would fix it. And then you could, I think you can probably like re, um, re I think you can refresh your, your repository. Um, and then it would hopefully, it would hopefully fix all those carriage return kinds of issues. So. All right, but I don't, I don't think that issue is going to affect people too much. So, you know, definitely don't worry about that for right now. So. All right, what other questions are on people's minds? Like I said, I might just do some stuff random here unless people ask some questions here, keep me talking. Let's build everything here. I don't know if I mentioned on our last uh, help session, but uh, you know, it might be good to kind of learn to understand what's happening here when you do do a build. So, you know, again, and, and I don't know if, if I showed this, but you know, this is just running commands. So, so I could run these by hand if I wanted to. So I'm, the, this is this is a command line command. It's invoking the the, the GNU C++ compilers, the G++. Um, and, and these are all flags. So normally, the way you run commands from the command line is, is or the way you modify the default behavior commands. Is by flags like this. Uh, so this is just saying things like um, warn about everything. So dash capital W is 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 give me lots of warnings. Treat all warnings as errors, um, and be even more pedantic. So 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 don't don't let trivial thing don't even let trivial things kind of go by. You know I want to know about all errors. Uh, dash G compiles it in debug mode, so we can run stuff with a debugger. Dash I adds uh, additional paths to the include. So if you do a, a number, a pound include inside of a file, like for example, when we do include catch.hpp, that's not in the normal, or the example one function.hpp, that's not in the normal system directories for include. Uh, so so the, the, like CMath and IO streams, so, so um, um, system libraries are going to be somewhere else in the system, but uh, you need to tell it if you have your own include header files um, that, okay, you need to look in these additional places. And that's why you have single quotes instead of using the angle bracket. So normally angle brackets, the compiler or the well, actually the preprocessor will look in the system directories to find these header files. But when you do double quotes, uh, it will use directories you specify, like, you know, look two directories up from here into a directory called include to find additional file, additional header, header files that you might uh, include. All right, losing my voice. So, I, I mean, that's all that stuff. And, and, you know, if you've never seen this, it looks kind of like, you know, a, a foreign language or, or things, but, but uh, this all means stuff, so. Uh, I, and output the result of that compilation to a object file, right? I talk a little bit about this in the user U001 uh, video, or maybe the second video or something. So kind of, um, uh, oh, I missed something there. So I need to say um, uh, dash C. Usually the order of this doesn't matter, but but yeah, I need to say uh, the file that I want to compile. So the source file is example one tests.cpp. And that's kind of scrolling off the end there. 
um, and then you want the result to be output to a file called example1test.0. Okay? So normally when you're working on projects that have more than one file in them, you have to compile each one separately when you're using a compiled language like uh, C and C++. Right? So I have to individually compile all of my source files in this project. So, so, so first we compile this file into an object file. Um, and, and there, yeah, I mean, I just did it by hand. And, and then the second one, we compile this file, example one functions into an object file. And then once you have object files, you can link them together. So this command, even though it looks similar, is actually linking together these two object files into the resulting final executable uh, called test. Right? Um, but yeah, I mean, that's basically what the make all does is it builds all the executables. And by default for the assignments for this class, there's two executables. There's a, a test executable um, and a sim executable. So if you look in your directory after doing a make all, you should find that there's an executable called test and an executable called sim. And, and you can run those by hand. So I could run my test. And that runs the unit tests. Or I could run the sim and that runs the, uh, the sim. That, that we use the sim for debugging if you need to run a debugger. This, ex this example assignment was, was uh, finding prime numbers, basically. So the example I, I, I did, write, you had to write, we, we wrote some functions to try and, to determine whether a particular number is a prime number, and then a second function that used that function to search for prime numbers within a range, right? So. So yeah, if you open up your project correctly, open it up at the top level, you should be able to, you can't do all of those targets, uh, but the, the main ones, so the make, so your normal uh, workflow is, uh, you don't have to do make clean all the time. I usually do that just uh, when I'm first starting in the day, just to make certain everything is a clean state. Or if I'm, if I'm particularly having some trouble, I might want to make certain that everything's clean and just start over from scratch, just in case um, something has gotten screwed up. You know, so, so it's always a good thing if you've kind of gotten lost to just go back to a clean state. But then you want to do make all or just make. So by default, that'll make all the targets, and then you do your make um, your make uh, tests to to run your system and unit tests. So. So anyway, as I started to say, the, uh, the, those three things, make, clean, uh, make build, you know, make all, and then make tests um, are set up by default for you in Visual Studio Code with hooks. So you can use Control-Shift-C um, to do a make clean. You know you got the right one if you didn't make if, if you see in your terminal that it tries to do a make clean. Um, um, if you can't remember, you can always open up your command palette in Visual Studio. So Control Shift P will open up your command palette uh, and 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 look for like run. So Visual Studio calls these tasks, so you can look for run tasks, and you should find the task that I added uh, into the configuration of Visual Studio Code. So to make all, make clean, and make unit tests. So, so yeah, Control Shift uh, C uh, is the keyboard shortcut I chose for make clean. Control Shift B does the make all, or, or you can think of that as building. It builds everything, and then Control Shift T I did for tests. So this, these, uh, we're using this catch unit test framework and it does take a little bit, of th those are um, a little bit unfortunately, but, but um, um, it does take a little bit of time to compile anything that's using those unit tests. So, but, but it should compile. 
Uh, and then, yeah, Control Shift T should run the uh, the unit tests. So, right. yeah, and our example one uh, that I gave you was already completed for you. I mean, this is what you want to get when you've actually completed the assignment. But when you first start an assignment, like assignment one, uh, you should be able to build uh, and run the test. But you'll get a lot. Most of the tests won't be passing, so uh, they'll, uh, you'll have a bunch of failing tests. So you have to create the code and, and fix stuff to, to make certain, to get the test passing, basically. So. so make certain you're asking questions if you have them. We have limited time for these. So on your first and on all your assignments, uh, you might have some tests commented out like this. So you might have to uncomment some tests. Um, so initially for this, uh, when, when I did the video, the, the, the showing the example, this example assignment, I started with all these tests commented out. Um, and, um, and none of these functions implemented uh, in the header file and in the functions file. Which is what you'll something you'll have something similar to this on the assignments that you're doing for the class. So uh, oops. Um, Uh, so I removed the function prototype. I talked a little bit in the video, you know, about something that you might have missed, like uh, in data structures or programming too. But uh, I mean, you kind of ought to. You might need to do a bit of a review of uh, C plus um, plus. Uh, but you ought to kind of understand what we mean by you know a function prototype and why you put the function prototypes in your header file. Uh, and your actual implementations of the functions and why you put those normally in your .c or your .cpp implementation files. So, so but yeah, I mean, normally for your assignments, you'll have something more like this. So you'll have things that you have to implement. I won't give those to you. Uh, you might have to add the, the function prototypes or the declarations of classes or things into like a header file. Um, and you might have to uncomment some unit tests. Okay? Uh, but but this the, the stuff I give you should still compile. Um, um, but the, the the test might not run. So so here now that I removed everything, um, um, stuff will still compile. But there's actually no tests anymore. So if I do if I run the test, it'll it'll run. But but it'll say there are no tests uh, to run. So. so let's try building that. And still building that. Oh, oh, I'm wrong. So I had an error there. So we don't. Oh, um, um, there are um, for these assignments, and also in the uh, example assignment. There's there is another file that it, that I probably didn't show in the video, but. Um, there's another file that's used to build the debug executable, or actually the, the simulation executable in this class. So, so we, we, we create a simulation um, for your assignments usually. So for the first week, it's the hypothetical machine simulator. Uh, for the second week, it's a, a, a process um, simulator, a simulator of, of running and managing processes and so on. Um, but, um, but yeah, there's, there's an actual main function. So the uh, there's going to be a file called something, you know, like assignment one tests that has all of the unit tests. Uh, but then there's another file, and there's no main function in there because the, the catch framework provides its own main function by defining catch config main, right? So that's why you can actually build and compile um, 
the, the unit test using this framework because it, it's, it, it's giving you a main function. But in the exam, in, in their sims, like assignment one sims or whatever, um, there'll be a main function here. And since I removed the as prime, I'm gonna have to remove calling those from here. have it compile. Oh, there's a lot of those there. Maybe I should just remove all of these. The only thing that didn't, so notice when you do a build without doing a clean, it only rebuilds the stuff that needs to be rebuilt. So since it failed building the simulator, I fixed that and then it only had to rebuild that and then, and then uh, create the, uh, the simulation file. So. So yeah, then, and like I said, probably next week I'll talk in more, I'll give you maybe some more, some hints on starting on the assignment one. Uh, but you know, you shouldn't wait till next week to, to look at the assignment one and get started on it. So I, you know, um, for lots of people, they need lots of time, especially on the first assignment to understand what's going on, figure out this build system and, and figure out these tests and stuff and, 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 uh, and, and do the assignment. So. But uh, but yeah, your normal thing is you might you might have to um, uncomment maybe the first test case sometimes for some of these assignments, and then you'll have to add some code. So in this case, after I uncomment that, um, I, I had to remove the as prime. So um, if we're trying to do a build now, so that this is the reason why I comment. I have to comment out some of these test cases. Um, is that I want to test code that you need to write, but um, I can't have that in there and have have the stuff I gave you be compiling the way I give it to you um, if it's if it still has in the calls to the functions that you need to add and write. So, so here we're not going to compile because we're trying to call is prime, uh, but we don't have an is prime function. I can make the compiler happy. The, the only thing you need to, to, to let a file compile if it's using a function in another file is, is you just need the function prototype, right? So if I just put the function prototype in my header file, uh, in this case, is prime returns a Boolean result. If you watch the, the video about this example assignment project, um, it's called is prime and it takes an integer as an input. So you know the, you don't really have to have the implementation. The, the given a signature for a function um, is kind of like saying, um, okay, somebody somewhere is is going to implement this function, but all you need to know is how you call it, right? So that that's why you put function signatures in header files, because that's the thing other uh, programs or other files are going to include and, and they don't want to know how the function is implemented they just need to know its signature so so how you call it so what's its name uh, what's it take as input so one parameter which is an integer and um, what it returns as a as a result so a boolean in this case That should allow it to build, I think, even though I'm getting some uh, warning still. So sometimes the updates for the uh, <coughs> the IntelliSense um, take a little bit of time um, <coughs> in Visual Studio Code here. But 
but hopefully if I rebuild it, you'll see that, uh, but yeah, no, it does know how to um, call that function now. Um, but it still won't build uh, because uh, even though it can call the function, when it tries to link stuff together, um, there is no implementation of is, is prime. So, so it actually built the test file, uh, but, but when it tried to link the executable, um, uh, it failed. So, so yeah. So like I said in the video, I mean, you should, you should, you should always start by uncommenting something, but then trying to, you know, don't, don't start writing code, just, just get it compiling. So never, never move on from stuff. Uh, if your project or assignment isn't compiling. So, so first get it compiled with the simplest thing you can do. And the simplest thing you can do to get it compiled is just to add a stub function. So we could just return true or false, for example. Um, so notice, since it didn't have to recompile the tests, uh, it's a lot faster. But it compiled successfully that time, if if you understand what's going on here. So, um, although, but my tests won't pass now because. Um, I'm just returning a stub, right? So now, you know, so, so now that I can compile, I can start doing the real work, which is, okay, I have to understand what my functions are supposed to do, and I have to implement those functions so they pass the unit tests that you're given. So, so yeah, can, you can run the unit tests with Control Shift T, um, and then I normally, so you normally want to go to the first failing unit test, so you have to scroll to the very top of your terminal. So unlike for compiler problems, these, these failing unit tests, um, it won't detect these, so you can click on these and go right to it. So you'll have to read the line numbers um, and determine, okay, so it's, it's line 40, which is my first unit test. If I scroll to the top here, that's failing. So, so yeah, I mean, it, it passed these uh, because I'm returning true, and it's true that one, two, and three are primes, right? But it failed this one uh, because it should return a false for four because four is not a prime number. So, okay, yeah. So I mean, that's really the the part I wanted people to be by today, right now, to be have the ability to do what I just showed you here to to be able to compile and run, be inside your dev box, you know, to be able to open up Visual Studio Code and be able to compile and run this stuff, right? So if you're not there yet, you need to, to get there so you can do this stuff, right? Uh, and, and also do make some, I, there's no, there's no, uh, there's no task that I've got um, defined so you can do a make submit. So you do have to, to drop out to a terminal. Although, again, you know, the, the, the terminal, uh, how do you create a terminal? I forgot. I guess I can split. Uh, I can get a new terminal by splitting it. That's not exactly what I want, but uh, well, anyway, I mean the, the the terminal that you get by creating a terminal inside of Visual Studio Code. I mean it's the same as using uh, a terminal from you know starting it from uh, you know uh, from the operating system. It's the same terminal. It's just inside of Visual Studio Code. So, but either way, uh, but but you need to have a terminal change to the correct. Um, uh, location in the file system so you can do the make submit when you're raised to submit your assignment. I'm already inside of repos CSA. So I guess when it starts a terminal here, one difference is it doesn't start you in your home directory, at least it starts you in your home at the root of whatever project folder you have open. So it did start me there. So I only have to change into the assignments example zero one assignment, for example, to do my make submission. <clears throat> All right, but yeah, I really want people to be able to be at this point today, you know, I was kind of hoping that people were at this point uh, you know, by the end of yesterday, 
before this help session. But but yeah, if you're not able to do these things yet, you know, you need to kind of get there. And if you're not able to do these things by the end of the day, um, uh, you really you should email me with what your vagrant up is showing you when you try and do the install. Um, and and we need to probably get a one-on-one uh, -on -one session set up so we can get your uh, dev box set up. Um, your install done so you, so you can have a development environment so you can work on stuff. All right. I am probably going to be stopping the session here. Uh, I haven't gotten any questions in a while. Anybody wanna uh, keep me from stop in here if you have a question we know I might go ahead and stop the video or the stop the recording Okay, last last chance for questions. I'm gonna stop the recording here unless I hear another question.